Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. But you can call me Pajama Grandma. In case you haven't met yet, go ahead and put hashtag pajama in the comments below so I know it's the first time you're being exposed to the Pajama Grandma. Today, I want to talk about in this episode, how come nobody listens to me? And as a mother, as a coach, as a leader, as a business owner, I have often caught myself asking that question. Now, number one, it's not a really good question, is it? How come nobody listens to me? Well, People listen to me all the time, so it's not like they don't listen to me. A better question is probably, how do I need to communicate? How can I communicate what it is that I'm trying to share so other people really get it and understand where I'm coming from and the intent of the message that I'm trying to share? That's probably a much better question. But let's talk a little bit about the feeling of thinking people don't listen to us. As a mom, I'll admit, sometimes I talk and talk and talk and, and think that my children and, and people I love and care about are listening to me, but it feels like they're not. They, they dem People demonstrate to us that they're not listening by looking the other way, looking at their watch, doing whatever they can to stop us or interrupt us or try to get out the door. And generally, whatever role we're playing, whenever we're communicating, if we feel that people aren't listening to us, it's for a reason. It's, it's actually based on what we're doing or not doing. If we're not using their language or words that they can relate to, they understand that and they tune out. I, I know I understand that and tune out. If somebody's using a bunch of super big, super flurious words and they're trying to tell me a simple message, my brain's already a mile ahead thinking, cut to the chase, tell me what you're trying to say already, get to the answer. My brain just runs around and does that. And I think a lot of human beings do. We're in such a rush to do so many things nowadays and there's so many things vying for our attention a lot of times we don't want a big flowery explanation. We just want you to tell us what it is that you want us to do. So speaking in words and terms that people can understand and relate to is really critical. Another thing that prevents our messages from getting through to people is if our actions don't match our words, if our body language doesn't match our words. If, if I tell my kids not to smoke and I'm a smoker, what's the probability my kids aren't going to smoke? It's really slim to none. We have to lead by example and we have to communicate the way we want to be communicated with by example. So, you know, the whole treat other people the way you want to be treated, that applies to every aspect of your life. And then our experiences, if we share the experiences that we've had and we give examples to people and if we look for commonalities and use that to explain and build a bridge between what we're saying and helping the other person understand and really communicating for understanding, not just to hear ourselves talk, then people are much more likely to listen to us and, and understand where we're coming from. If we have a reason for communicating with them, if they understand why we're telling them something or why we're sharing something with them or why we're asking them to do something, that is always going to be much more powerful than if we just try to tell people to do something. I know as a leader in my own business, and as a leader in corporate America, I would never tell somebody to do something or ask somebody. I usually ask people to do something without giving them the reason why we wanted to do it and why we needed to do it. I mean, people don't want to just be told to, to do things and then expected to do them like they're a robot. They want to know the reason why so that they can buy in and know that what they're doing is actually contributing to the end result or the goal that we're trying to achieve. So being a leader, being a mom, being a coach, any role that we have in life, anytime we're interacting with other people, we have to think about how we're communicating and how we're coming across. And if we're coming across in a way that they can relate to, if we're being consistent with the message, if we're sharing our why, people are more than happy to listen to us. Um, I, I think in one of my coaching situations, I've got a coaching student and we've been talking for a couple of months now about narrowing his focus and getting him to focus in on one thing. And he's done a lot of really successful, cool things in the last few months, but they're all over the place. They're like scattered, a shotgun approach. And we talk a lot about, you know, pick your one thing that you really want to be known for and then develop that. And then after you develop that, you can add all these other things. You know, it's hard for me to talk about because I am the same way. I am very scattered and very, I do a lot of different things. I'm very action oriented, but um, I feel like he just doesn't, 
doesn't get it. But I think it's because I'm not being consistent. He knows I'm doing a lot of different activities. And so unless I am focusing in and honing in on one thing, my actions aren't consistent with what I'm telling him that he needs to do. So I have decided that I am focusing in on my women's summit. And that is my one thing that I'm focusing on. And as I'm more consistent with that, I suspect that he's going to be more likely and more suited to focusing in on one thing as well. So I won't be able to say, how come nobody listens to me anymore? Just a little food for thought today. Go out, make it a fantastic day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.